We did it, plant friends. Winter has passed. We are into spring. The days are getting longer. I want to get outside. I want to unfurl as a person, but my plants also have so much growth ahead of them. And I want to make sure that you set your plants up for success, do a little spring cleaning in our house and a little spring cleaning with our plants so that we can have robust, juicy plants thriving through the spring and summer. So get ready. Growing joy. Hello, plant friends. Happy spring. I'm Maria. I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy in your life by doing so. Spring is such a joyful time of the year. It feels like we're little bears coming out of hibernation, especially if you live in upstate New York like me. So today's video is all about prepping our plants for spring, setting them up for success so they can do what they're designed to do, which is grow, grow, grow. And I'm so thankful to our partner for this video, Espoma Organic. They make all of the amazing potting mixes that my plants have been potted up in for the last like almost a decade and all of the fertilizers that we're gonna be using to fertilize our plants in the spring and summer. So thanks, Espoma. So I thought it would be fun to repot a couple of plants while I talk to you about several different aspects of spring and how it affects our plants. So we're gonna spring clean our collection together. We're gonna spring clean our house together to set up our plants for success. And then we're gonna spring clean our actual individual plants. One thing with repotting that I wanted to talk to you about is it's really good to repot a bunch of plants at the same time. Don't just repot one plant as a one-off, because I wanna show you something. So I need to repot this plant and I need to repot this plant, right? It just so happens that this plant needs to be bumped up into a planter this size. And this plant needs to be bumped up to a planter. Where is my third planter? Oh, here it is. This size. So when you repot a bunch of plants at the same time, you're able to utilize a bunch of planters and you don't have to go out and buy more planters at the store, right? So that's just an easy, eco-friendly way to continue letting your plants thrive without spending a lot of money and creating waste. If you don't know about repotting plants, if repotting plants stresses you out, we have an entire video all about how to repot your plants. We'll link it up here if you wanna go use it as a tutorial and repot along with us. Both of these plants are great examples of needing to be repotted because they're both what's called being pot bound. You'll notice this plant has the roots circling the bottom of the pot. The roots haven't grown out of the holes yet, but the roots are growing in a circular motion and we want to break that. Um, and this one, you'll see that the roots are actually coming out of the bottom of the pot. So those are two signals that it's time to repot because these plants are about to take off with new growth, right? Because in spring, there's more light. So there's more photosynthesis. There's more opportunity for the plant to generate food to grow, grow, grow. So we don't want to put a plant that's about to take off in growth in a pot that's too small. We want to give it a little bit of room so the roots can continue to grow and support all of the beautiful shoots and leaves that it's about to grow, right? Where shall we begin? I have been potting my plants in Espoma organic soil uh, for like almost a decade. This is their organic, just general potting mix. I'm going to use the general potting mix for both of these plants because they're pretty trip, pretty typical tropical plants. They don't need like any soil amendments. They also make a cactus mix that I use on my succulents and my citrus. And then if it's an aeroid that likes chunky mix, I will add a little bit of their orchid bark into a, um, into their potting mix just to add a little bit of aeration. So now as I do this repotting, I'm gonna to talk to you about what's happening outdoors. So like I said, spring, what happens in the spring is the days get longer, right? We're so excited that the sun stops setting at you know four o'clock. If you live by me in upstate New York, the sun will literally set at 3.30 in the middle of the winter and it's the most depressing thing. The days are slowly getting longer after the spring equinox, which is so exciting. So there's more light. Longer days means more light volume available for these plants to capture and photosynthesize. More photosynthesis means more food for the plant. More food for the plant means more resources for the plant to actually um, grow, to actually create the food that it needs to grow more leaves. That's why in the spring you hear a lot of things about like starting to feed your plants because they're going to take off for new growth. But basically spring means new growth. So there are a few things to be mindful of in the spring that might happen in your home that might catch you off guard. So let's talk about it. Number one, with more light volume, your plants could burn. So if you have plants sitting in a windowsill in the winter where it's gentler light, and then all of a sudden they get more direct light, you could start seeing leaf burn. So be mindful and just keep an eye on your plants for if they're a little bit more 
more sensitive plant and they don't want direct sunlight, you might see a little bit of leaf burn in the beginning of spring, and then you're gonna, you know, adjust accordingly. Another thing to be mindful of is water, right? So plants need water for photosynthesis. So as plants are photosynthesizing more, you're gonna see that they might start drooping faster and you'll need to water more. So a lot of people need to up their watering game in the spring and summer because their plants are just so active, they just get thirstier. Also, it's hotter outside. Another thing to be mindful of in the spring is, you know, in the spring, <laughs> mother nature is like revving up, you know, in the spring, at least where I live, we'll have days that get really warm, but we'll still get cold snaps, especially in early spring. So being mindful, if you do have plants on windowsills, they still might get some cold snaps. So be careful with kind of the volatile weather that spring can bring. Another thing with spring that is beautiful is all of a sudden they're on those warm days. It's a great idea to open your windows to get some fresh air circulating, right? In the winter, you've probably had your windows closed. Your plants would be so excited to get a little warm, you know, breezy, balmy, 70 or 80 degree air circulating um, and shaking the plants up too. They might be pretty still. Quick reminder, if you have plants growing in circles, you're just going to shake that pattern free so they don't keep growing in circles in their new plant. Another thing to be mindful of in the spring as it gets warmer, your ACs might kick on. So be mindful of wherever your ACs are because you don't want your plants to get a cold snap. So like say you have a bunch of plants that sit under NAC, you don't want that AC to start blowing cold air on the plant and then shock the plant and see it like curl up or droop. That's happened to me before. With windows as well, so now let's talk about how you can spring clean your home because we talk a lot about spring cleaning for your home, but not necessarily for your house plants. But there are some spring cleaning duties that you could do to set your plants up for success. Number one is to wash your windows. A lot of people don't think about this, but in the winter, internally with the heat blowing hot air and dust all around, your windows will get shockingly dirty on the inside. And then if you can, washing your windows on the outside as well so that you can, you know, make sure that your windows are as clear as possible to let as much light in so that your plants can bask in the sun and grow big, juicy, beautiful leaves and blossoms for yourself, you know? Another thing I like to do in the spring is to take all my plants off of the windowsill and wipe the windowsill down. This is just for aesthetic purposes, but also like if there's any old bug larva or if there's, you know, any pests hanging around, sometimes they can hang out around under the, the planters. So I like to take my, you know, it just feels so good to take your planters off your windowsill, wipe it down and put your plants back. You're just gonna feel that like fresh energy. Or if you have, you know, like an Ikea greenhouse cabinet, or if you have all plants all over shelving, take them all out, give everything a wipe down, put it back. I've also found that I've gotten, um, for my shelves, I've gotten this waterproof contact paper that I've actually lined the shelves with so that when I'm watering, if I water and accidentally spill, I'm not as stressed about like ruining shelves because at this point in my life, I've ruined a lot of shelves. <laughs> I've ruined, I have water stains all over my house at this point and we're trying to not do that as I grow up. Speaking of water stains everywhere, another thing that I like to do, if you're anything like me, if you're a plant parent like me, um, there is usually dead leaves and soil all over my floor at the end of the winter. There's soil all over my floor all year round, um, and I just feel like that's kind of a badge of armor for, for plant parents, but I like doing a really thorough sleep, uh, sweep, <laughs> sleep, I like doing a really thorough sweep under all my windowsills, under all my plant stands to make sure that any dead leaves that have fallen off and fallen on the floor in the winter, because that's so normal for leaf drop in the winter, that they're gone because we don't want those vibes in spring. Spring is about a fresh start, right? Spring is about a fresh awakening. So we want to make sure that we clear all of that. So that's spring cleaning your house. Drop something in the comments. If, if I missed any spring cleaning house chores that you feel like help your plants, drop them in the comments and let me know. But now let's talk about something very near and dear to my heart, which is spring cleaning your plant collection as a whole. I think the spring is a great time to do a plant audit. I have a whole episode on my podcast about this, but a plant audit is basically when you look at your collection as a whole and you figure out what plants are staying and what plants it might be time to leave, right? In my book, Growing Joy, I have an 
entire chapter on the dark side of plant care because sometimes it's really painful to realize, oh, I need to get rid of a plant or, oh, I've amassed too many plants and I'm getting really overwhelmed and this isn't fun anymore, but I feel really bad because I've spent money on a plant and I don't want to give it away, right? Um, in the book and in that podcast episode, I have so many different strategies, but you know, we're getting into this hobby of plant care to experience joy, right? We are growing joy with our plants. And spring before your plants are about to set off a lot of new growth and probably fill in your plant collection as well, right? Because they're about to grow in size. I think it's a really great time to look at each plant and think about, is this plant bringing me joy? Is this plant doing well? Am I enjoying caring for this plant? And if the plant is causing you stress more than half of the time, ditch it, right? There's tons of different ways that you can release plants. You can donate them to a nursing home. You can sometimes donate them to your local hospitals. You can gift them to a friend, right? If they're doing well, or you can compost them. I compost houseplants all the time. I think there's something poetic about returning them to compost, which is then going to go into my garden, right? They kind of live on in a different way, but it's a great time to do an audit of your plant collection Decide what's staying and what you really want to invest your time and energy in that's going to give you joy in return and what isn't. And this is your permission slip. I'm writing you a permission slip to get rid of the plants that aren't bringing you joy anymore. Okay, we clean the setup a little bit because now we're getting into what you've really been waiting for, right? Which is getting into what should you be doing to each and every plant in order to set it up for success come spring. So we've already repotted some plants, right? Obviously that's number one. Number two is pruning. You're gonna prune because it instigates new growth, right? So it's gonna kind of trigger that plant to like wake up and be like, okay, it's time to grow. But also another reason why I prune, which I feel like a lot of people don't realize is it gives you kind of a clean slate so that um, if there's more browning of the leaves, you're going to know. So right now with this plant, it's been here, it's lived through the winter, it has a couple of brown leaves, totally normal, especially with variegated plants. This is the most gorgeous variegated pothos. I don't like the way these look, right? So I'm gonna cut them off. It's gonna trigger the plant to grow, but also once I remove all of these leaves, the plant is gonna look good again. There's gonna be no brown. If I see more brown, I'm going to know, okay, something is still wrong here. Is it a light thing? Is it a fungal thing, right? Because these browning like this is usually, this is usually just like a result of the winter, maybe lack of a humidity. It's variegated. Browning on variegated plants is normal. But if I see continued brown spots, it actually might be a fungal issue. It might be a leaf fern issue. And I'm not going to really know that. I'm not going to be able to track that if the plant has a bunch of brown leaves. There's a lot of leaves on this plant. How am I going to be able to be like, oh, yeah, that one was already brown? No. So you get a clear playing field in the spring before you get a lot of new growth so you can see if the new growth is healthy or if there's something going on with the plant. Let me tell you, I feel incredible right now. I freaking love pruning. I don't know why people are so scared of it. It feels so satisfying to get rid of those brown leaves. One thing I will show you too, like this leaf has a lot of good green to photosynthesize and just a little brown spot. So instead of cutting the whole leaf, I'm just going to cut the brown spot off so that plant can still benefit from photosynthesizing. Oh my God, you look so much better, my friend. I'm so happy for you. You must feel better too. Everybody feels better when you get a haircut, right? Look at how much better this looks. There's one more in here I want to get rid of. There's a couple more browning. But for the most part now, we have no brown leaves. Ha! Huh, so much better. Another thing that I like to do with spring is clean the leaves, right? Because uh, especially in the wintertime, your heat is blowing a lot of dust and like gunk and weird stuff, right? Um, so cleaning the leaves is going to be really helpful. A plant like this that has so many leaves, I'm going to put this plant in the shower. I'm going to make sure that the um, tray is off. I'm going to fill my bathtub with plants and I'm going to run the shower and I'm going to let the shower water hit the leaves and let the leaves drain off, right? Uh, sorry, and let the water drain off of the leaves and that will clean the leaves naturally. If you have a plant that doesn't have too many leaves and you want to have this uh, like a beautiful mindful moment with your plant in your spring cleaning, right? Because we're spring cleaning our plants and when we're spring cleaning our plants, we can turn any, you know, plant activity into a life parallel. So, you know, when we repot our plants, we can think, okay, what areas of my life do I have to repot? Where do I need bigger space to play and grow? Um, 
when we're pruning, we can think about, okay, what areas of my life, what toxic people, what bad behavior, what limiting beliefs can I prune out of my life? And then this is like one of my favorite new hobbies. So I found these really cool microfiber gloves. These gloves will help you clean the leaves of your plants so simply. You can either just take the gloves and take the leaf and go like that and wipe anything off, or you can take like a neem oil or a leaf shine spray, spray it, and then wipe it clean. With the oil, the leaves look so shiny and pretty. Um, and I don't know, there's just, a this is like kind of intimate with your plants. It's kind of nice. I really love just like taking a moment before spring starts to just have a moment with your plants, right? I'm a fan of speaking to your plants and being like, you're going to grow so good. I'm so excited for you. Spring is here. Get ready, little guy. Um, but then also your plants look really good. And once again, then you know, okay, if a pest infestation breaks out, if there's an issue, I know that this plant looked perfect, like these leaves looked perfect at the beginning of the spring, and I can adjust accordingly when something comes up. Other things to do in the spring. Now, I know on a lot of my videos I talk about that you should fertilize when you see new growth. So in the winter, there is times, if your plant is growing in the winter, I suggest fertilizing when that plant is growing. But when you Google fertilizing your houseplants, what you're usually gonna see on the internet is fertilize in the spring and summer. And I highly agree with that as well. I freaking love this product. This is actually how I found Espoma. Summer Rain Oaks gifted me a bottle of this at one of her plant swaps. I started using it and I was like, wait, what is this organic company? And that's how I got into their houseplants and then started working with them, their houseplant material, and then started working with them. So this is liquid fertilizer. You shake it up like this. It makes it so easy. I remember when I was a beginning plant parent, I would like try to use that weird synthetic blue fertilizer and you'd have to half it because it wasn't indoors and it would be messy and it would be all over the place and you had the granular granular things that you had to like stir in the water. This makes fertilizing so easy. You literally just shake this up. It's organic, so it's safe for your pets. It's safe for your kids. You pour a teaspoon of it or you pour the The cap is the measuring thing. And then based on the size of your watering can, you literally just dump it into your watering can. It does have a bit of an organic smell, but the smell dissipates really quickly. Um, put it in your watering can, and this is when, in the spring, I am going to put a little bit of that indoor every time I water my plants, just to make sure that if, you know, over the winter, the soil, the nutrients got depleted, um, that we're putting more nutrients, healthy, happy, organic nutrients back into the soil. And I love that it makes it so easy. So Espoma has an indoor liquid fertilizer, but it also has a bloom fertilizer. If you have houseplants that you want to trigger blooming, you would half the dose because this is designed for their outdoor plants. And then it also has the grow. So the bloom is in purple and the grow is in green. And it also has an orchid fertilizer that's liquid if you need to fertilize your orchids because we all want some orchid blooms this spring. I'm so excited. I'm getting back into orchids this this spring and summer and it's been really fun. I'm really enjoying it. One other thing that you might want to do for spring cleaning with your house plants, number one, pests are going to happen, especially if your windows are open, if you're putting your plants outside. So have some sort of pest control on hand that you can use if you need it. Um, I have Arbor on hand at all times. You can use their insecticide preventatively. So you can fill the bottle up. They come, it comes with a little measuring cup. You put it in, you shake it up and you spray it. It's really simple. They also make a fungicide um, in case you have a fungal outbreak like I was talking about earlier. But it's really good to keep everything you need for anything that can happen with your houseplants. It's good to have in your houseplant first aid kit. And if that interests you, you can check out my houseplant first aid kit video on YouTube. Um, we have a list of everything that's in my house plan for Sade Kids. So I'm ready for whenever something bad happens for my plants or when something good happens for my plants because it's spring plant friends. I'm so excited. I just think there's something so special about a new leaf coming and the patience that it takes to just watch it slowly unfurl. And I encourage you when you see new growth, when it is the spring and you see a new leaf unfurling, you look inward and you think, how am I unfurling? What is slowly unfurling in my life that I can be so excited about so that when I, once I unfurl, you know, I stand in full glory, shining at the sun as I stare into my studio light. 
there's obviously so many plant life parallels we can talk about. If you're interested in that, you can read my book. But I hope this was helpful. So you're going to spring clean your house. You're going to spring clean your plant collection as a whole. And then you're going to spring clean your plants. I hope this was helpful. I hope this supports you and supports your plants as you embark on this journey spring and summer. We are in the growing season. It is growing season, baby. It's been a long winter up in the woods, let me tell you. And I am ready to celebrate spring, new beginnings, and all of the new growth that comes. Special thanks to Espoma Organic, the sponsor of this video. I have truly been using their products. I know I talk about them all the time, but I've truly been using their products for the last, you know, seven, eight years. I love them. All my houseplants are potted in their potting mix, and I use their indoor fertilizer all the dang time, plant friends. And until next time, my sweet plant friends, I hope you keep growing joy.